Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I know we have bad news. Daenerys is no longer with us. The tall branch and the small branch were doing fine, but the middle branch, it was sick. I think I'm just gonna commit to a fake plant. I know it's not real because part of the reason why I wanted a live plant in the room is I read that it filters the air naturally and it's kind of like a, a natural air purifier, if you will, which was one of the main reasons why I insisted on having a life plant. But the second reason is that I felt it added a nice aesthetic to the background situation. I think I might just have to, again, like I said, commit to a fake plant, which there are a lot of beautiful ones out there and, you know, might just have to get a machine air purifier i don't know suggestions down below sound off for favorite fake plants and favorite air purifiers but today we're talking about something even more exciting than that today we are taking a look at the new sonya g pro i set and let me tell you man when i think it was susan mayfield who sent me an instagram message telling me about the new pro set that was soon releasing and shout out to her or any of you who like send me instagram messages about new releases that are coming up they get me so excited i could not believe it i mean you know how enthusiastic i am about sony g brushes i will link my first review video up above and down below i purchased singles and i went through each of them their purpose and their design and i made sure that i demoed each one of them and i have been using them non-stop ever since and sony g is an amazing woman she has a makeup blog called sweet makeup temptations.com which is outstanding she has different blog posts about brushes about her trips to japan about luxury makeup but also in talking about that she was so sweet in commenting on my Instagram post as well as my video reviewing her brushes and just her passion about brushes makeup and her craftsmanship and just her dedication to making sure she designed the best brushes she could ever and I also wanted to give a huge congratulations to Sonia for a very successful launch and we are all looking forward for future launches to come we love you Sonia and when I I saw she was coming out with a pro set and she's also working on a face pro set so in this video we'll take a look at the pro eye set individually we'll also look into some of her Instagram posts breaking down the design uh, the purposes of each brush and take it from there and with all that said please keep on watching you know that was a very long drawn-out intro forgive me but my name is Alicia welcome to kinky sweat a platform where you'll find everything from movement to beauty I mostly put my movement stuff on Instagram and I'm looking to expand my movement library here on youtube if not youtube definitely igtv here they are they arrived a few days ago and i finally got my hands on them although they are in the individual plastic sleeves i did give them a wash because on her instagram post she broke down each brush first of all and then she, her last post she explained when you do receive them this is what you'll experience and because the bristles are tightly bound she recommended that you wash them first just to kind of loosen them up but ultimately the more you you use them the better they'll become oh, that is so true i'm very happy to present the newest addition to the sony g brush family this is the i pro set it was originally released on november 29th and it is currently sold out i'm not surprised man i mean the hype around this release was tremendous also beautylish as i explained in my last video i think it was my uh smoke sessions melt cosmetics eyeshadow palette video that the beautylish team was reaching out to those who subscribe to the mailing list releasing the date information as well as the price information like listen you could pre-order now girlfriend and i was like oh! and i mistakenly called her jacqueline is jacqueline thank you jacqueline i didn't order right away but when 1 p.m. hit the clock, I was like refreshing at like 12.55, made sure I checked out right away. And I'm not exactly sure how fast they sold out, but it sold out. We don't know the restock date, but I'm sure Sonia will keep us updated as well as Beautylish with that. Where do I begin? Listen, man, I, I freaking love blending brushes. And when I saw she released two blending brushes uh two packers and another pencil brush i was like yeah man these are the sleeves they come in with and i wanted to show you you have like an emblem or a logo here i think from 
where the brushes are made but where should we begin i am just so excited to dive into this because i haven't used them yet and you know my anticipation is just like overwhelming all the information i'm about to present you is taken from the beautylish website as well as her instagram post which i'll post photos of when speaking about each brush. And of course, we're doing a demo because we gotta see how these babies work. Elevate your eye makeup with these essential tools from Sonia G. Pro Eye Set comes with five handcrafted brushes designed to make working with eyeshadow faster, easier, and more fun than ever before. Perfect for beginners and pros alike. These best-in-class brushes help you master a variety of techniques with flawless results. We love flawless results. What's included? So first they, so first they present the pencil Pro. Here is the Pencil Pro and oh, do you like my nail? In honor of viewing the new Sony G Pro Eye Set collection, I decided to slap on Scorpio from KL Polish's Zodiac collection. It kind of reminds me of the red to black gradient design on the handle and this is like a black to red kind of a metallic finish duochrome sitch so i thought why not slap on scorpio while reviewing sonia g i love it so here is pencil one you see that the brush head is small and pointed and all these brushes are made with psychoho goat hair which is like the softest of the softest a smaller version of the current pencil two i think I might have that. No, I think I have pencil one. Yes, I have pencil one. This is one of the brushes I previously purchased and you see that the pro line is indicated by the different handle design. It's tapered as opposed to being more cylindrical. Is that a word? From her original set. And also uh, the Sonia, the S is different too i'm not sure let me roll these barrels so like you can see so you have like a different sonia s design on the pro handle and you just have a regular s on the original handle design in terms of the brush heads i think well it says it's a smaller version i have pencil one so maybe pencil two is slightly bigger than pencil one but here are the brush size head differences i'm getting hot i gotta take off this sweater it is densely packed to give it strength yet remain super soft on the skin the dome point size to cover as many purposes as possible currently i forgot to say this before the pro eye set retails for 150 dollars that's a lot of money but it is an investment worthwhile because if if you ever try Sonia G or even Wayne Goss brushes, you know how life-changing and transformative they are. So I'll just leave it at that. And because they are sold as a set, they're not sold individually. So I don't have a retail price for each brush. I think she had mentioned in one of her posts that she is looking to sell them individually eventually but we'll look out for that update the responsibilities for the pencil pro are contouring the eyes smoking out intensifying the crease placement building the outer v intensifying a transitioning color blending the edges spot placing a sparkly shimmery or metallic shadow smudging pencil powders or creams you are you could do a lot well we're gonna try all those things so i'm looking forward i also wanted to present the instagram post aligning with each brush she posted for each brush not only its profile but similar brush shapes from different companies i have those on standby because i think she compared it to a mac brush which this is very very old so this is the mac brush now i'll put it up against it i think the sonia g has a slightly bigger head and i've had this mac brush forever and her brushes say japan on them on the handle not sure you can see it it's like a light gold print I also have Japan here. It's very hard to see. It's etched in, but the ink kind of wore off. I think this is a MAC 2... It's either 210 or 218. I can't see it. It wore off here as well. But this is like OG, man. When I was first, first, first starting makeup, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to use brushes. I was just kind of winging it. But now that I know, here are the brush comparisons in terms of size. If you have any of these brushes and you just needed a guide as to like what the Pencil Pro is most closely related to. Next up, we have the Worker Pro. Here is the brush head for Worker Pro. And I was very excited to see this because I love this pinched tapered shape and again the handle is tapered so energy on the bottom and you have japan on the other side as well as the name of the brush 
near the tail of the handle. A universal eye brush designed to fit all eye sizes and shapes. Packing color on the lid, crease work, transitioning, placement, blending, diffusing and smoking out the lash line application. Brow bone application, yes. So she compares the Worker Pro to a Smith 235, which I have actually. I don't have it near by. I think it's in my other uh, brush holder, but I have the Smith 235. It also is compared to a Wayne Goss number 18 from his individuals, but I think it might actually closely relate a Wayne Goss number six, which is from his anniversary two collection. It might be a little bigger, but yeah, this is a lot more fluffier, and this is also compared to that brush also it's compared to a mac 217 which i also have here is the mac 217 again i'm i'm shocked that you can actually still see the lettering on the handle but here are all the brushes back to back i'm sorry that they're so dirty but i did wipe them on a towel and again like the more i use this the fluffier it will become and i think it will take on the same kind of look to my Wayne number six and Mac 217. She also compares it to a Hakuhoro J5523, which I'm gonna get because she recommended it. Next up, we have the Crease Pro. Here is the Crease Pro that basically looks like a paintbrush. It is very tightly bound, and again, the more I use this, I feel the more it will kind of fluff out. Here she says, it's a medium-sized crease brush that builds color seamlessly and blends impeccably. Its particular design allows elevated strength at the tip. Yes. Offers optimum control and minimizes fallout. It is responsible for placement of color, for crease work, transitioning, and blending. For sure, on the photograph, the Crease Pro looks a lot fluffier than it does like fresh out the plastic sleeve. And she compares the Crease Pro to a Wayne Goss number 19, which I think is maybe similar to a Wayne Goss number 4 from his anniversary 2 set, of course. A Hakuhoro J146, a Smith 230. I think I have that. Do I have that on standby? Yes, I do. My Smith brush is significantly more fluffy right now because I just used it more, but I feel the more I use this, the fluffier it will become. It is also compared to a Wayne Goss number 17 and a MAC 221. I think I have that brush. I think this might be a 222 or something, but this is like my old MAC uh, crease fluffer brush. And here they are side by side, so you can just get an idea of what they look like. Again, the more we use this, the more fluffy it's gonna become because in the photograph, again, it, it blossomed a little bit and I think she's just been using it and, and that's why it has that shape. But man, I can't wait to start using these suckers so they could really transform into like that beautiful fluffy crease brush that we all know and love and we all want and desire here is builder pro that just looks like an ideal packer brush i mean beautiful in design amazingly soft as all her brushes are Builder Pro is a flat tapered brush for packing color onto the lid and building intensity while minimizing fallout. The tapered layers, shape, and density allow great control with the placement and uniformity with the application. This brush is responsible for packing color on the lid, building intensity on the outer V, diffusing and smoking out an application with the tip of the brush, softening and blending the perimeter of the crease and transition color. That's nice. And here, this brush is compared to Smith 253. Woo, I got Smith 253. Where are you? Where are you? This is actually one of my most favorite Smith brushes. I think it's an innovative design, very soft and ideal for packing color onto the lid as well as the inner corner because it's very tapered tip. It's also compared to a Chikuhoto G4, a Wayne Goss number no. 7 from his anniversary 2, which I use quite a bit as you know, compared to also a Hakuhoto J242 G and a Mac 239. I don't have a MAC brush, but I do have my Zoeva Packer brush, the 234, which I use a lot as well. So here are the brush head comparisons from Sonia to Smith to Wayne Goss to Zoeva. I know how dare I put Zoeva next to a Sonia G brush. I'm sorry. But in terms of shape, in terms of shape, I thought it was very similar to those that she presented on her Instagram post, okay? Don't kill me. Oh, this looks incredibly soft. I just love the shape of this brush and it's lightweight, which is 
something she noted as to a characteristic she wanted to accomplish with this set. I think she realizes how heavier, these are a little heavier, not by a lot, but they are just because it's a wider handle, but because these are lighter and I think designed for pros who are packing a lot of makeup, a lot of brushes from the beginning, perhaps because of the lighter design is not gonna make their cases just like weigh a ton, you know what I'm saying? Last but not least, the Blender Pro. I think when I saw the Blender Pro, I was like, <sighs> so excited because I perhaps that was one thing I observed with the Sony G collection, the original one, is that she did have a crease brush, but it was very tapered. And you know how I love my Wayne Goss number 16 and also the number three in his anniversary two set. I just love me a big, fluffy blender brush that whether you're applying your transition color or you need something to refine the edges after the eye look is complete and I'm gonna need you to focus on me and not my luggage. I was looking for that brush and boy did she give it to us. Here is the blender pro what the brush head looks like and I believe this is dyed goat hair as opposed to the undyed indicated by it being white. A densely packed blending brush that distributes color across the lid with a diffuse finish. Base color, crease work, transitioning, and blending. Also compared to a NARS number 13, a Charlotte Tilbury eye blender, and a Polidorf sheer crease. Polidorf, I haven't heard from you in a minute. I have a NARS brush. I think this is from, I'm not sure what collection this was from, but see how big the handle is on this thing. It has the um, red dot at the base of so the handle. And this is one of my first crease brushes that I try to learn how to, how to use. And I think like slowly but surely I got the hang of it. But I, you know what, from presenting it and just feeling it out now, I miss this brush. I think I need to use this one again. And out of the brushes, I think this is the biggest one thus far. Cannot wait to finally dive in. So those are the specifications for the brushes. If you have any questions, I will go to her Instagram page where she lays out and describes and profiles each brush along with their brush comparisons, why she designed it, uh, just the inspiration behind the craftsmanship and everything in between. I would definitely head over there if you have any remaining questions about these brushes. But what we really want to see is how they work. And with that said... Right now, I don't have anything on my lids. I'm actually gonna use the Worker Pro to apply my P. Louise base. How about that? I believe you can use these for creams and liquids. Also, head over to the Beautylish website because they have great breakdowns for each brush on the Pro Eye Set page as well. All right, all right. Ooh, that's so soft. I can't stand it. Applying that P. Louise. Oh, that's so soft. I love it. I hope I'm able to use, I think I'm able to use creams with this brush. Sonia, let me know. The tip is just so fluid. I mean, I could barely feel it on my skin. It's amazing. I'm gonna give that a wipe because I think I wanna use it with the powder product as well. Because Sonia originally designed her eye brushes when Natasha Denona eyeshadows in mind, I decided to, why not dip into the gold palette? Mm. What should we do? What should we do? I think I'm just gonna do, I just saw like a thing Natasha did on her IGTV. So first she took sparks, but she just used her finger and kind of applied it all over the brow bone as like a first kind of thing to do. That's pretty. Oh my God, I'm getting it all over though. Wow. All right, then she applied Python, which is the deep teal. But with Python, I think I'm gonna use the pencil first because she used like a pencil brush to pack the color on from mid lash line all the way up to the V point. And then we'll use another brush to blend it out. How does that sound? And why is this green thing? And first from the lash line, whoop. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna pull it up into a V point. This is a very soft brush. I mean, it's like, I don't feel anything on my skin. And then I'm gonna start brushing it in to form that V. I'm 
I'm really enjoying using this brush, man. I am getting a little fallout because I don't think I'm tapping off like I should. Just gonna dust that off. I'm actually gonna take the Worker Pro because I believe I can use Worker Pro for blending and diffusing. Yeah, packing color on the lid, crease work, transitioning, placement, blending. I'm taking circular motions to help diffuse Python. Oh, this brush is incredibly soft. I just, I mean, all, all of them are. They all are. I'm actually gonna take some and start building up the saturation. I love how you can fit it right into the crease line and the bristles just help diffuse the color out softly and you're still in control of the placement. The tip of this brush is incredible. I can't get over it. Like, it feels like silk. That's pretty. I like to use the pencil to form my V. I mean, this is not how I usually apply my makeup. I usually go in with the transition shade first, but you know, there are no rules to application and it kind of depends on your mood and, and how you feel applying your eyeshadow that day. But I think this method is actually very helpful to those who have a hard time diffusing out into a V. What you would do instead is create the V shape first in a very blunt way and then go in and diffuse from there. And then we'll take our Worker Pro and just help diffuse. This is an amazing brush, man. I can't get over, again, the silkiness of it how it allows or just rather helps the product to glide across the skin. I'm taking more Python and because we have the shape pretty much how we need it to be, I'm just building up the saturation and then any blending I got to do, I just keep that same brush and make it happen. Definitely, I feel this minimizes fallout because when I use Python, it could get a little aggressive with the fallout just because it's a very pigmented shade and I'm getting very little, which is great. How's this looking so far? I think I wanna go in now. I mean, I'm, I'm reversing the steps of what Natasha did, but now with the Blender Pro, I wanna use the shade Dijon, which is a shade I feel everyone wished was better. <laughs> if you compare it to Lorelei or even Mochi from Mel Gemini, I mean, those shades are distinctly mustardy, olivey yellow. This, I feel, is more just transition and better suited to be applied after your standout shade. So here, this is uh, our Blender Pro. And right over the edge of Python, I'm gonna start to diffuse the crease. Ooh, this is very soft too. I love it. Ooh, see, I like this color applied after the fact. When you apply it by itself, it gets a little weird. I don't know why. And I'm gently pulling it out a little bit. I don't know why I put sparks on first. I shouldn't have done that. I was just following the instructions, you know? I was trying to follow what Natasha was doing, but I shouldn't because I don't like how that looks. I'm going back in with Worker Pro just to go in deeper into the crease. Also, I wanted to read what she said about her first collection versus the one she released. She says the first collection was about innovative shapes. They were created to fill gaps in the feud world. I think that's like a, a Japanese brush. I'm gonna put that up here and research it before I say anything else. And work with specific products, tackle difficult textures, or revive your interest for products that you may not enjoy using anymore. This new pro series is my take on everyday essentials they have been created with the makeup artist in mind. This idea was also an impact on the handles. Yes. All the brushes in the Pro series have a more lightweight handle that is to facilitate the handling and travel, like we said before. They have the same coating and are the same length as the original series. Now, I don't consider myself a pro, but I do realize the design differences in terms of the intention behind it. The first collection was, yes, for that person who was not a makeup artist, but really want a beautiful makeup and a seamless experience in terms of application. Her designs delivered. I use her brushes every day and I feel with uh, hard to work with textures. If you're not good at applying bronzer or blush, or you feel like every time you do, it turns out muddy and not 
smooth or airbrush these brushes have your back and i think these are more for people who are more comfortable with blending and more of a pro state of mind in terms of your makeup application and experience i cannot wait for this brush to fluff out and remember when i first reviewed wayne goss i don't want to say i had a hard time it was a different experience from all the brushes i had previously used before diving into his and i was saying wow i'm not using Used to using a blending brush that's so tapered but now i can't put it down man and something that i had not experienced with any other brush is how his brush designs help elevate my makeup technique experience as well as improve it every brush i used thereafter my application was just better and i think it's because his designs really helped me learn how to apply makeup it was a really lovely thing to discover all right now we're gonna dive into sandstone i believe like this medium shade here i'm gonna use the same you know what i'm not i'm gonna use the crease pro brush the smaller head brush and we're taking that medium shade closer towards the inner third Ooh, this fine tip is really making an impact man for those who love cut creases and when you're deepening that diffusion line this is your brush so soft oh my god i can't sand this now i want to use builder pro this is the original builder one look how big the handle is compared to her pro design this is the original builder one and this is the builder pro you can see that the brush head is a lot bigger and it looks more traditional than the builder one from her original release i'm actually going to use this brush with one of the, the finicky shades. I'm gonna go in with brass, which is like my most favorite duochrome shade in this palette. And I'm gonna see how it goes without applying it with the finger. Again, we gotta wiggle, wiggle, wiggle into this eyeshadow pan. And then let's apply that to the lid. Ooh, not too bad, man. Oh yeah, that's packing on some nice color. Now, Natasha does go in with her finger and yes absolutely you get more color impact with your finger however I think this brush is very effective especially if this was a more traditional metallic or shimmer shade because this shade is like a lot you know what I'm saying I'm still gonna use this brush with another a more traditional shimmer shade or I forgot what this texture is. Natasha has like 20 different textures in one eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna go in with the same Builder Pro but onto the inner corner to highlight that portion of my eye. Ooh, looking good, man. I'm just packing that on and using my pinky to just press on any loose particles that are drifting around. Do this on this eye. But see, I like using a brush sometimes because I have more control. So what I like to do is I use the, the tip of the brush to kind of carve out around my lid. And then I go in with my finger to pack on a more concentrated application of color hello can you be in frame please then again with aurum builder pro i got a little crazy with that finger application man so i gotta brush all these particles i'm also going to take or go back to worker pro because i want to lay down more python since brass kind of took over a little bit i just want to make sure that looks like a seamless transition from matte to shiny. How we're looking so far, friends. I think this is looking nice. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to stick with Builder Pro and use Python under my lash line. Maybe I should wash that brush a little more, Alicia. Oh, I love this for the lower lash line. Oh, yeah. I think Worker Pro will also work exceptionally well for this purpose. But man, it makes it very easy to pull from lash line to V point. I'm gonna hit on the other side. Oh, incredibly soft. Does not feel scratchy. Will not sensitize the lower lash line at all. Especially if you're particularly sensitive to lower lash line application. You're good. Taking Crease Pro with Dijon and just trailing the low edges of Python. And the look is complete. In addition to mascara, I also applied the Marc Jacobs liners, the glitter ones. I applied Gemstone on my waterline and also all that glitter is the gold shade 
on the inner corner to provide a little bit of pop. In addition, I applied Shadow Play, one of the blush lights that I just ordered from Mel Cosmetics, which will be in my Black Friday Insanity sale video. Honey Thief on the cheeks, some um, Casino on the cheekbones, and Ofra Liquid Lip in Verona. There's not much else to say except that I freaking love Sonia. I appreciate her as a person. It does kind of give me some perspective in these brushes and why I appreciate them the way that I do. I loved my application process with them. Each of the designs are crafted for what they need to do and they deliver bar none i am just again blown away with how soft these brushes are and the fact that they're only just going to get better with use it, it excites me to know that my experience will ever be evolving into something better and better and better this is more like a gushers video because even though i'm reviewing them i just went into this knowing that i was going to love them based on my experience with my first purchase from her on beautylish I love my face brushes. I have them here. I love my sculpt one. I love my sculpt two. I love my face one and everything in between. And these brushes just are no less than extraordinary. I am, oh, I'm sorry, that was a Wayne. We love you too, Wayne, but not. This is a special video for Sonia. I felt they just made my eye application insanely easy. Of course, I applied my eyeshadows in a very different way than I usually do. But I feel that's okay. Like, it's okay to change up your routine and your application process once in a while. Because you might discover something that you really love and use that for a while and go back to whatever you were doing before yes they are expensive and i understand if this is way out of your budget uh that's why i use other brushes and recommend other brushes from different brands that maybe are more within your budget scale if you can even if you have to save five dollars a day and if it's just one brush then just get one brush from sonia again i'm not sure when she will release the pro eye set in individuals if I had, oh man, if I had to pick one that you absolutely need and just from using it today, I say Worker Pro Man because you can use this to diffuse the crease and the transition shade into just a beautiful gradient of color that looks smooth, diffused, and flawless. The fact that it is incredibly soft, not only can you pack it onto the outer V, you could also pack color onto your lid. You could sweep lower lash line color, diffuse it out, make it smoky, or make it precise. You could apply concealer under the brow bone, or you could apply your highlighter powder under the brow arch. And you saw how I was using it to diffuse Python so it could appear smoother more diffused oh my god i just turned it on its side and started to circle around and it felt amazing even if i didn't need to blend anymore i just love to do that action because it feels so good on my crease and listen i would just say get them all but i know that might not be realistic for some and if you're wondering like look girl if there was just one brush i could get if she does release these individually which one would it be i would say again it will be worker Pro. Definitely invest in a brush that's multifunctional in terms of just hitting the whole spectrum of eye shadow application uses. Yeah, man, Worker Pro is bomb. Of course, let me know down below if you received your eye pro set from Sonia G on Beautylish, what you've been thinking about them, what you've been using them for, uh, your feedback about them, and everything from there. And with that said, that's a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another tutorial demo chit chat or review take care and i'll see you again soon